Alright, so here we are with our properties of logs. Remember that in our notes when we did this, most of the time if it's not equal to a value, it's helpful if you set it equal to a variable, and then you can rearrange. Pretty much any time it's written in log format, you're going to want it to, re to write it in exponential to solve, and vice versa. So, in number one here, to rewrite, you're going to take that base, bring it to the power of the answer, and then set it equal to the piece that was inside, so the 4. So we're trying to ask ourselves what will make this equal, and so there's this 1 here that would be an equal, well, would be equal to 4 if we put it as a power of 1. So if we put it as 0, that would not work. If we put it at 2, then it would be 16. So x is 1 is our answer here. Uh, same thing going in the next one, so we're going to do 6 to the x and when does 6 to the x equal 1? And so the only value as a power that makes a 1 is going to be a 0. So technically we're looking at 6 to the 0, which is why x equals 0. Uh, the next one here, again, if it sets equal to x, we have 2 to the x, and we're asking how many 2's two, times itself will make 32. And so 2 to the x is the same as 2 to the, let's see, 3 is 8, so 5, so x is 5. All right, next piece, 3 to the x is what we're looking at. And so we need to find out how many 3's times themselves make 81. So 3 to the, uh, what is it, 3 times 3 times 27, so 4. Yeah, that sounds about right, so x is 4. And moving on, number five. As, oh, okay, so different. We've got five to the x equals three, the third root of 25. So we want to make sure that we can make this into a base of five. So we'll rewrite the right side so that it has a 5 as a base, so 5 squared is 25. That looks like an 8 or something. Uh, and so then we have to remember that this root is actually the denominator of a power that could be here. So really we have 5 to the x equals 5 to the 2 thirds, and so x is 2 thirds. All right, uh, the next one is the same idea. We're going to write 6 to the x equals 1 over the fifth root of 36. All right, so I need to rewrite 36 as a uh, power of 6. I'm just going to write that here since we don't have much room. So 6 squared. And then just as we did before, that power becomes the denominator, so that little 5 is going to be there. So now we're at 6 to the x equals 1 over 6 to the 2 fifths. But then, of course, to make it in the numerator, we have 6 to the negative 2 fifths. So, x is negative 2 fifths. X. Maybe I need some more space. All right. Next one, we've got log base. They don't say, but because they don't say, it's 10. And so we have 10 to the x equals 10 to the third. Um, that's a 10. Here we go. And so we know that x is 3. Next one, again, log base 10. So 10 to the x equals 10,000. And so we just need to uh, think about scientific notation or how many zeros make up 10. So we have, what, 4? 10 to the fourth. So this x is 4. Same thing here, just counting our zeros. So we've got 10 to the x equals 100,000. And since there are five zeros, it's going to be 10 to the x equals 10 to the fifth, or the fact that x equals 5. <laughs> All right. Next piece, base 10. Again, because it's not written, but 10 to the x is going to equal 10 to the negative 4 or x is just negative 4, since they're both in the power there. 
the next one is 10 to the x equals the third root of 10. And so we just need to realize that 10 is technically to the first power, and so we can bring that uh, radical, that it's called an index, the index out to be the denominator. And so we technically have 10 to the x equals 10 to the one-third. And so x is one-third. Uh, next one has a base 10. So 10 to the x is going to equal 1 over the square root of 1,000. But 1,000 can be rewritten as a power of 10, so 10 to the 3. And then, of course, this is a squared root, so we can bring that squared into the denominator of the 3 there. And so we have 10 to the x... Oops, that's x to the x. I seem to be writing that a lot. 10 to the x equals 1 over 10 to the 3 halves. But then, of course, to bring it up, we get 10 to the x equals 10 to the negative 3 halves. And so x equals negative 3 halves, or negative 1.5. All right, and now we move on to natural log. So that has a base of e, even though they're not writing it. So we know that e to the x is supposed to equal e to the 3, and so therefore the x and the 3 must be equal. And the next one has a base e, and so we've got e to the x equals e to the negative 4, so x must equal negative 4. Uh, next one again, natural log is base e, so we've got e to the x equals 1 over e. And that's to the first power. I write that so that I can move it to the numerator by doing e to the x equals e to the negative 1, or the fact that x equals negative 1. Continuing on, natural log base e brings to the x and is going to be equal to 1. And so the only way to get a 1 is to bring it to a 0 power. So x is 0. All right. Next one, e to the x equals fourth root of e, and then that's to the 1, and so 4 is the denominator, so e to the x equals e to the 1 fourth, and so that means that x is 1 fourth. All right, and then the last one is e to the x, but that's going to equal 1 over the square root of e to the 7. So it's a square root, but that can go on the denominator. So e to the x equals 1 over e to the 7 halves. But of course, to bring it up, that means that we're going to get e to the x equals e to the negative 7 halves, which means x equals negative 7 halves. Alright, so moving on. There's a lot of activity going on out there, if you can hear it. Okay, so we're going to evaluate the expression without using a calculator. Oh, so that's not so bad, because basically uh, we're going back to, uh, if we take, for instance, uh, this one here. 10 to the x equals 10 to the negative 4. The official thing that we're actually doing to both of these is that we're taking the log base 10 of this side. Oh, that's supposed to be... I'm really good at writing x's instead of 10's right now. So if we take log base 10 of both sides, we end up canceling the log base 10's, and so x equals negative 4, things that don't cancel. So anyway, that's what's happening here, and we did do it in notes. But basically, 5 log 5 is going to cancel, and so 8 is your answer. Uh, even though it doesn't have it, this is technically 10 to the log base 10 of 14. And so the 10 log 10 cancels, and so the answer is 14. And then that's what's happening in the next one. It's e to the natural log base e, even though we don't write it, of 1 fifth. And so e natural log e cancels to leave you with 1 fifth as your answer. The next one wants you to use a calculator to evaluate the expression. 
if it's defined and check your results by evaluating the corresponding exponential expression. So all you need to do is um, in your calculator, because it already is log base 10, as these first two are, you just press the log button on the left side, type in 0 0.908, and you get negative 0 0.0. 419. Does it say anything about where to? Nope. Check your result by evaluating the corresponding exponential expression. So basically we're saying 10, which is the base, to the negative 0 0.0419, because that's what this equals, is going to equal 0 0.908. And so if you take 10 to your answer that you just got, you should get 0 0.908, which we do. Uh, the next one, we're going to evaluate log of negative 5.14. And it turns out it's not possible. Um, because if we look at it in the way that it's saying here, we're trying to find 10 to the something that's going to make a negative 5.14. And there is no way to bring something to a power that will make it negative. And so this one is not possible. All right, then we've got our E. So we're trying to do natural log, which is also on the left side of your calculator, 0 0.733. And so the answer is negative 0 0.3106. But of course, we're uh, going to check that by saying it's supposed to be 10 to the negative 0 0.3106, or the actual number in your calculator, is supposed to equal 0 0.733. So 10 to my answer is... Oh, E to my answer. Oh, hi, we've switched E to my answer. All right, and that works. So then the last one is uh, kind of like number 32 here. It's saying, okay, well, you had an e to a number, and it was supposed to equal negative 3.3. And again, there is no way to raise something to a power to make it negative. Like, that just doesn't happen. So there you go, which is why there's an asymptote on our exponential equations, because you can't do anything with those negative results. <laughs> they don't exist. Okay. Uh, then our next one's here. We're going to solve the equation by changing it to exponential form. Hey, we've just been doing a bunch of that. So our log base 10, in this case, since it's not written, makes this 10 to the fourth equals x. This next one again, log base 10, because it's not written, to the negative 3 is supposed to equal x. Um, I guess I am supposed to actually solve this, so 10 to the 4th is a 1 with 4 zeros after it, Woo! so 10,000. And then 10 to the negative 3 is supposed to be a, what is that, 0 0.001? I don't know why I'm saying equals x. Yep. All right. Um, the way that I remember those, not that it really matters, is that there's three places, even though there's not three zeros. I mean, I guess there's three zeros if you include this non-necessary one. Um, but three places instead of three zeros. Versus in the positives here, you have four zeros. Anyway. Then we... Did I finish that page? Yes. Okay. So then we move on to matching the function with its graph. So the biggest thing here is kind of looking for that um, y-intercept. So you can always plug in a zero and see what's happening. So we're trying to find log of one. And so we're trying to find log of one, which is really 10 to the what we want to know is going to equal one. And so that means it's at zero. So zero, zero is going to work for your number 37, so that's B or D. Um, but then if we look at how they're going, notice that these two have negatives uh, and the two at the top do not. 
And so if you're going to have a negative, you're going to be flipping into the y direction. So we'll come back to that, but I'm pretty sure um, this one is the negative one versus this one is your exponential. But hey, okay, so, oh right, we're doing logs. All right. And then the next one, if we put in, uh, whoops, zero right here, we're actually going to get zero, zero as well. So that's going to be B or D. Uh, over here, if we've put in a zero, we're going to get negative natural log base E of negative three. Ugh. So e to the x equals negative 3, but it was negative because it doesn't exist, but that's where it's approaching. Where? How come I can't write on this? My pen is malfunctioning super. There we go. All right, and so it looks like that. So on that note, our domain is going to be anything larger than negative 1. So x's are larger than negative 1. Our range is going to start at y's that are larger than negative 2. Uh, let's see. Domain range. Uh, it's it is continuous when it exists, so continuous. And it increases always. Well, I mean, I guess it increases from x is greater than negative 1, because it doesn't exist, so it can't be increasing. Uh, it is bounded below at negative 2. But again, you don't need to say that. You just need to say if it's bounded below, bounded above, or bounded. Uh, and then we don't have any extrema. And we don't have any symmetry. And as weird as it is, we don't actually have any asymptotes because it uh, cuts off at there. It doesn't actually make an asymptote, so none of those. But if we write out our end behavior, we've got the limit as x goes to the right of the function is going to be infinity, even though it's going to get there very, very slowly. And then we've got the limit as x approaches negative 1, because that's where it stops. The function approaches 2. Okay. Then we have some applications here. So... The Beer-Lambert law of absorption applied to Lake Erie states that the light intensity, which is given as that I, in lumens at a depth of x feet satisfies the equation. Hey, look, it has a log in it. So they want you to find the intensity of a light at a depth of 30 feet. So again, x feet. So basically they're just saying, go ahead and solve. This is our I over 12 negative 0 0.00235, and there's going to be a 30. So we're going to need to multiply negative 0 0.00235 times 30, and get negative 0 0.0705, and our log of i over 12. Remember that this is a base 10, and so if I rewrite this, it's 10 to the negative 0 0.0705 from log to exponential. And that's going to equal your lumens over 12. And so to solve, we just need to multiply by 12. So 10 to the decimal we got. Whoops, 10 to decimal of negative 0 0.0705 times 12 gets you lumens of 10 point doesn't say where to round so 2019 hmm, sounds intense 
30 feet, probably not a lot of lumens down there. All right. And then our last one, oh, second, last page here. We're going to compute a logarithmic regression model and use it to predict when the population of San Antonio will be 1.5 million. Yikes. 1.5, yeah, million. Now, fun thing about uh, logarithmic regression is that we actually use the year's number. Okay, so again, anytime that you have logarithmic regression, and this is on your formula sheet, it says it on the back there, um, or the second page, you do actually need to use the year because logs actually have asymptotes, and so they wouldn't actually reach zero, so you can't put zero in here because you would get no answer. So if we put these into our stat and then edit as our list one and list two, we should be able to find a logarithmic regression with stat and then over to calc and then down to log reg. So you gotta watch out for both of these because um, there are a few options and one of them says logistic. Well that's not what we're doing because we're on logs and not logistic. It also says power, we don't want that, and it says exp, nope, we actually want this one, because the only one they give us an option for is natural log. Perfect, it works, just has a different base. Alright, so typing these in, so I've typed them in, stat, calc, down to ln for uh, natural logarithmic regression, press enter, noting that L1 is your years and L2 is your population, means that our equation is going to be y equals a, which is negative 2464-61780.3, that giant number, plus b, which is, oh, I need to start over here. Wow. I just be a little less sloppy. Plus a B value of three two five seven three six seven eight point five one times the natural log of X. So here's our equation. And then the easiest way to use the model to predict when the population of San Antonio will be 1.5 million um, is to just graph this equation and graph this one and find where they intersect because you're technically just setting it equal to 1,000, 1,500,000, that number. So. Uh, easiest way to do that and then find the intersection. However, it's not going to be on your graph, and so you'll have to kind of do it without seeing it on the graph, but you can, of course, do it mathematically by adding this number to it, dividing by this number, and then uh, solving that natural log. So that's what I'm going to do because I like the algebra better. So I'm going to take the 1500000 and I'm going to add my 246 number here. I put two plus signs, super. And then I'm going to divide by this number here, because that's what's being multiplied by natural log. And so I end up with 7.6123 is equal to natural log of x, or since that's base e, e to the 7.6123 is going to equal the x. So e to the decimal that we got gives you 2022, which means that in the year 2022, the population of San Antonio is going to reach that, except now we've had a pandemic, so no. Okay. 
Next one, using the data, data in table 3.19, compute a logarithmic regression model. So again, same thing, but now we're doing this as our list 1 and list 2. Again, make that our years and not um, any other way. So same steps. We put our data into stat edit. Once you put your data in, you go to stat calc and then go down to the number 9, which is ln reg. They don't have a log base 10 regression. We can convert it if we feel like it. And so our equation is going to be 56360880.18 oh, minus 7337490.871 times the natural log of x. And so if that's our equation, again, they want you to use it to predict when it equals 500,000. So again, easy way would be to just graph y equals 500,000 and y equals the equation that we have. But I'm going to do it algebraically. Um, and subtract five this number, 5636, and then divide by negative 733, that number. And so we end up with natural log again equals 7.6131. And so in order to rewrite, we're rewriting it as e to the 7.6131 equals our x. And so that means that our year is e to the decimal 2024. And that is your assignment. Lots of algebraic fun.